Hello and welcome to May's selection of indie games. As we approach the halfway point of the year, there are still plenty of great titles to get stuck into. First up this month we have Showgunners, a turn-based tactical game set within a game show. It's a premise that reminds me of the classic action game Smash TV. Having played the demo, I can tell you that the combat feels good, with a lot of options available to the player and some fun slow motion kill cams. In between combat encounters, you will need to traverse an obstacle course of traps and lethal puzzles, making sure to always keep an eye out for the next fight. It's an intriguing mix of mechanics that looks to add something a bit different to the turn-based genre. Shogunners comes to PC May 2nd. Of course, you can't argue with sheer strength demonstrated by the Warden. Or you could take another tack and become almost invisible like Phantom does when things get too hot. There are plenty of ways to survive, but even more ways to die. It's not all about combat, though, is it? Honestly, I'd spend as much time with the fans as possible. Which can lead to better rewards in the actual competition. Exactly. And the other thing I'd always be keeping my eye out for is the show director to shake things up at the worst possible time. What about all those puzzles and traps? They're nothing to sneeze at, Joe, that's for sure. Brain power's almost as important as firepower down there. Well, one thing's for sure, nothing's for sure on Show Gunners. Head to Steam and GOG to wishlist Show Gunners before it arrives on May 2nd. Tape to Tape is a roguelike with a difference, as it eschews the classics of the genre being neither an action game or card based. Instead, you control an ice hockey team where every choice matters as you hire players, pick abilities and even bribe the ref. Fail in your attempt to make it all the way and you can visit the Blade Master where you can buy permanent upgrades for your character. I'm a sucker for the classic 16-bit hockey games, so if this title can successfully marry that gameplay with roguelike mechanics, it could be a lot of fun. And as always, it's nice to see a studio trying something a bit different in the roguelike space. Tape to Tape comes to PC via Steam Early Access, May 3rd. Sucking is the first step towards not sucking. Well, I guess it's my fault for being an optimist. Let's run it again, donkeys. Make shiny! If you don't stay out the damn box, you're not getting any Campbell's Chunky Soup tonight! Maybe visit the Blade Master and trade in that twig for something a little more mature there, bud. Oh, for fuck's sake. Just bribe the damn ref. Well, fuck me, Ronin. Could you be decent? Am I hallucinating? I swear. Damn it all. Fucking idiot. How about a knack? Maybe by the time L3 is over and the Leafs win the cup, you might get somewhere. Next, we have Ravenlock, an action RPG that looks to be taking a fair bit of inspiration from Alice in Wonderland. You play a young heroine who has been whisked away to a new world via a mystical mirror and must battle against a tyrannical queen of the darkness that plagues the land. Developers Coco Cucumber have a good track record having previously made Echo Generations and Riverbound, which were both very well received. Ravenlock follows a similar voxel art style and is what the developers call the final game in their voxel trilogy. I really like the style they've gone for and judging by their track record, it's shaping up to be another strong title from the studio. Ravenlock comes to Game Pass, PC via the Epic Game Store and all the Xbox consoles, May 4th.
Darkest Dungeon 2 doesn't need too much introduction, being the follow-up to smash indie hit Darkest Dungeon, naturally. Red Hook Studios have not been content to just sit on their laurels though, and have instead gone down the roguelike route for the sequel, featuring the same, albeit improved turn-based combat and visual style you must form a party, equip your stagecoach, and set off on a journey across the landscape to avert the apocalypse. All the genre staples are here, including persistent upgrades to help you in future runs, and like the previous game, you need to consider the composition of your party, as the more they get on with each other, the more effective they will be. The previous title got a bit too grindy for me, so I'm interested in a sequel that looks to provide the same combat and visual look in a tighter package. Darkest Dungeon 2 releases on PC May 8th. Onward once again, though all the world's horrors bar the way. When you are ready, this rutted roadway will finally take you home. Next up, we have a title that looks to resurrect a style of game that has been dormant for a while. Tin Hearts is what I guess you would call a Lemmings-like. For those who don't know what that is, Lemmings was a series that started on the Amiga and was a puzzle game where you had to guide a group of Lemmings through a level, avoiding the various pitfalls along the way. The Lemmings were not controlled by the player and would continue to move in one direction until they came up against an obstacle or more likely fell to their death. Tin Hearts takes that premise and replaces the Lemmings with toy soldiers asking you to guide a troop of them through levels that grow in complexity. Love love Judging by the footage, things look a lot more complicated than they were in Lemmings, with various love. powers available to the player, including the ability to a pause and rewind time. So. Alongside the puzzles, the developers say there is an immersive story to unravel. It's nice to see an old style of game make a return, and hopefully Tin Hearts can bring this style of game to a new audience. Tin Hearts marches onto PC May 16th. <laughs> This letter is what disturbs me. Have you read it? Speaking of old styles of games, say hello to Firmament, a puzzle adventure game from the studio that made the Myst series. This was a collection of puzzle games that came out in the 90s and was one of the first games to make the crossover to the more casual audience, despite how difficult the games were. Firmament isn't looking to do much different to its predecessor, offering a mysterious world that you will explore and learn more about as you solve the various mind-bending puzzles. I don't think it will convince those who have never liked these types of games to give it a go, but if you are a fan, you'll find a lot to like here. Firmament comes to PC and PlayStation 4 and 5, May 18th. Inkbound is an online co-op turn-based roguelike from the team behind Monster Train, a game I loved. It's unusual to see a studio mix roguelike mechanics with online co-op, and it was hard to get a sense of how the co-op will play out from the little I played during a test a few months back. Combat felt good though. You are confined to a specific area and enemies telegraph their attacks, allowing you to dodge them. Your character is free to move around, sort of in real time, and pick up ink to power your abilities. Outside of combat, gameplay follows the usual run-based system, with permanent upgrades available between runs. It's shaping up to be an appealing title, and one that I remain interested in, despite a lack of clarity around some of the mechanics because of how good the developer's previous game was. Inkbound arrives on PC via Steam Early Access, May 22nd. There are a few games on this list this month that hark back to titles from the early period of gaming, and Bread and Fred is another of those. This time, the game being used as inspiration is the NES classic Ice Climbers, Alongside a friend, you take control of penguins that are strapped together and must work in tandem to climb the mountain. Can't find a friend to play with? Don't worry, as there is a single player mode as well, where you are strapped to a rock. 
as you would expect from a game about two penguins, it looks very cute, but undoubtedly the platforming will be challenging. So make sure you bring a friend you get on well with. Bread and Fred comes to PC May 23rd. Yes! That was me, that was me, that was me, that was me. That was me, that was me. <laughs> Bread and Fred. Full release available on PC May 23rd. Coming to consoles later this year. Our penultimate game for May is my pick of the month. Miasma Chronicles is a turn-based tactical adventure from the Bearded Ladies, who have shown already that they have a good grasp on the fundamentals of what constitutes good turn-based gameplay, with their previous title, Mutant Year Zero. Similar to that game, Miasma Chronicles sees you exploring the world in real time before switching to turn-based combat when you come across enemies. This mix allows you to set up some nice ambushes and get the jump on enemies, giving you a leg up in battle. Like Mutant Year Zero, the game has a post-apocalyptic setting, but this time you play as a young boy rather than some animals. Combat appears to involve more fantastical powers this time around, and the world is more detailed and involved. I'm mostly here for the combat though, which I expect to be of a similar quality. A good story will just be the icing on the cake. Miasma Chronicles comes to PC, PS5 and Xbox series of consoles May 23rd. Finally for May is Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun, a retro shooter, or boomer shooter if you prefer, set within the Warhammer 40k universe as the title suggests. One of the standout things about this title is seeing the Warhammer 40k universe brought to life this way. The mix of 3D and pixel art makes for a great look. Combat wise it looks a lot of fun, with some chunky gunplay and a metal soundtrack that looks to complement the action well. There isn't really much more to say other than it is shaping up to be another fun retro shooter. Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun blasts onto PC and all the consoles May 23rd. That wraps up May's selection of indie games. Once again, let me know in the comments below which titles you are most looking forward to. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.